Welcome to Tips from the Track, brought to you by GoRacing.ie and TheTote.com. We're here at the Kerr race course this morning as we get set for the Derby Festival weekend, featuring three fantastic days racing, including the Dubai Duty Free Irish Derby, which will go to post tomorrow at 5.25. But before we get into that, we have a competitive night's racing ahead of us today, and I'm joined here now by Noel Hayes from The Tote and Martin Murphy from Horse Racing Ireland. Guys, it's going to be a very competitive night's racing. We've a lot to look forward to. Sure have, Jane, indeed, and uh, lots to look forward to, of course, for Tote Punters. Um, we have a €100,000 pick six guarantee on each of the three days here of the festival. Um, it starts off tonight with a rollover of about 35000 into the pick six. Obviously, we have the jackpot guarantees as well of 10000 on Friday or 10000 on Saturday and Sunday and 3000 today, Friday. And we've got play spot guarantees as well, 20000 today and 30000 on Saturday and Sunday. So lots for the Tote Punters as well, obviously. But yeah, lots to look forward to. Great derby look forward to, but gr great racing to get our teeth into before that as well. Excellent. And obviously the Friday evening, it's a great way to start the Derby weekend. Always a nice, social, relaxed, fun atmosphere. But obviously a very competitive card as well. And we start there um, at the 5.25 with the, the Phillies maiden over seven furlongs. Um, an interesting contest. Aidan O'Brien runs, runs three juveniles as well that we haven't seen yet on course. So um, it's an open contest. Yeah, look, I suppose it's uh, what you'd expect uh, for a weekend like this uh, here at the Derby weekend. Uh, O'Brien with three, but I think, um, you know, words perhaps impractically be bred from that yard could be the best with Joseph Ryden, but also Curly Locks in familiar colours. Uh, David Watchman was very well backed last time out in Leperstown and perhaps can improve for that experience. Um, I don't know if Martin has something a bit better than I have. Well, I'm not quite sure, uh, Noel and Jane. I, I thought myself Brown B had a bit of a chance for Colin Keane and Gerald Lyons. Ran quite well fifth at Leperstown first time out. His horse has been running very well lately. The ground is good to firm currently at the moment, although we had some overnight rain. I think this one is an each way chance around 10 or 12 to 1. Also, maybe a note of Jim Bulger's there, first time out, vitalised, uh, horse by uh, vocalised, uh, first season sorry for him. And that one could go well if there's a few pounds. I think a few pounds there this morning, Paddy Powers. Excellent stuff. And as you mentioned there, the going is good to firm. And obviously, you know, not an easy build up for the race course with all the good weather and then obviously the, the small bit of rain. But conditions seem to be really suitable. And again, we move on to our second race and another interesting contest. Another very open maiden, yeah, a real head scratcher, I guess, Jane. Here is just a speculative selection for John Ox, uh, right way with Declan McDonough in the saddle. You know, he's not riding the Aga Khan horse uh, further down the card, but he rides this one. So it would be nothing more than a speculative uh, suggestion in this race. Uh, a very open maiden. Well, the likely favourite is Jim Bulger's fake or I hope I pronounced that right. Hope my Irish teacher isn't watching me. But uh, it ran quite well last week, second at Gordon Park to Leaf Cutter. That was a decent performance. You would expect that to improve, and I'd say that would be the form choice. But I would res respect Noel's opinion there. I think John Ox's horse there, right way. It was taken over a race at Cork a couple of weeks ago when the ground got very fast. He's by Cockney Rebel, and he wouldn't have to be a whole lot of good to win this first time out. So if there's any money in him, I think right way could be the one to go. Excellent stuff. And obviously then in our third race, we have a, a UK visitor in, in David Evans. Um, horse is very well respected when they run on, on home turf. Um, and Lager Time is to be well respected. Yeah, look, he, he's not making the journey over here, you know, without a chance, I guess. A lot of prize money on offer relative to what the race for in England, of course. Um, there's 15,500 here this evening. You know, it's a stable, it has to be respected, and it's a horse in form. Um, it's a very open race, though, as these sprint handicaps typically can be. For me, I like the look of Kiss the Stars. I think he probably had a bit too much daylight uh, last time out in uh, Navin and might have just got outdone by Cam Bay, but he's franked the form and won ever since. Um, Kiss the Stars, maybe, with a bit more cover today. Uh, he's ran very well here at the track before, so he'd be my selection. I think we're just having a, a look there at um, Cam Bay as well. Martin, what do you think? Well, Cam Bay actually only ran last night as uh, Tipperary finished third. He certainly is a much improved performer. Uh, you know, he's gone up over £26 in the last couple of runs. He'd have to re be respected, but five furlongs at the Curra is a very stiff track. He's probably bound to lead from the start, but I, I'm not quite sure he's quite good enough to win now because he's gone up so much in the weights. I, I like Knowles when they're kissed the stars, has a very good chance, but there's lots more in the, in the race with chances like the likes of Big Bad Lily. Also, strategic heights has improved an awful lot, but the one I'd be looking at quite interesting is one by Pat Smullen, a horse called Pencil Hill, trained by Tracy Collins. Tracy and her father, her late father, Con, used to have great records at the Curran Derby weekend. I think this Pencil Hill showed a bit of form last time when he was uh, fourth over six furlongs. Drop back to five furlongs will suit him. Although he is a nine year old, he's well drawn and stalled ten. I think around six, seven to one, he'd be my each way selection. Excellent stuff. And obviously, then we move on to our feature race of the evening, the Dundeal Premier Handicap. 50,000 on offer in this race, so it's going to be competitive. And um, what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, well, I think the competitiveness of the race reflects the prize pool. Um, it's an incredibly tough race. Um, you know, a lot of horses we're used to seeing, I guess, running these big handicaps here again this evening. For me, it revolves around Mick Halford's two horses, uh, Pit Stop, who won very well last week uh, in Leperstown, and also One Diamond, who's been a little bit disappointing, um, but ran very well here last year as a three-year-old. So for me, I think I'd be looking for Mick Halford, one or the other. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, you could probably pick eight or ten horses here with big chances. Yes, yeah, certainly wide open, Jane. Very good uh, prize money as well. Two horses here to Randall Royal Ascot, uh, Table Rock from Aidan O'Brien and Third Dimension from Ger Lines. Third Dimension uh, was a bit unlucky on that occasion. I think he can come out on top tonight in that little personal duel. But other horses with chances are the likes of Akasaka, even at a big price. But the one I was looking at myself, uh, apart from one diamond, was a horse of Denver Wells called Jihad Jadan. We only had to run, run, uh, run this year in a, uh, over an inadequate distance on very soft ground, which he wouldn't like. I think on fast ground, he won here at the Curra last year. He also won at the Galway Festival. He's lightly raced around 9 or 10 to 1. I think he could be one I'd be watching out for. Very good. And obviously then we move on then to the, uh, to the Apprentice um, Derby on the card as well. Obviously being Derby weekend and Apprentice Derby on the card, it's probably the f highlight, one of the highlights of their own season. Um, and again, another interesting race. Yeah, very interesting race, small but select field, but it just goes to show, in fact, when you look at the jockeys on board here this evening, the depth of talent we have in, in the apprentice ranks here in Ireland, you know, we really are spoiled for choice. For me, I go for local trainer Dermot Well with Lee Roach, who's in cracking form lately, uh, he's riding through to set you free, he's dropped back down to a mark of 82, and I think if he was to repeat uh, his form from a couple of seasons back where he finished second to Inish Man in Listowel, um, I think he could be the one that could win this at a, at a tasty price. I'd have to disagree with Noel there, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, I think Trutal says she's had lots of chances. She'd been a little bit disappointed. I think she won softer ground as well. Now, uh, the step up to mile and a half will certainly suit, but she was beating the odds on last time in Sligo. So it's one I wouldn't really recommend to myself. I'm sorry about that, Noel. <laughs> <laughs> but I think last year's winner was uh, John Ox, uh, trained the winner, and he's got a big chance here with Kerazak. Now, he's a little bit disappointed last time he was beating the odds on behind Fog of War at Tipperary. That was pretty good form. The other one I'd like is a horse called Cab Joy, uh, trained by Jessica Harrington. Uh, ran very well here a couple of weeks ago, finished second in a good handicap. And then beat a, a hot favourite last week in the Limerick Maiden. Of the two, I think at the prices, I'm going to go with Cab Joy. Very good. So no harm to have a bit of healthy debate there as well amongst our panel. But I suppose, um, no, you're putting your neck on the line in the next race. You, you have a tip for us. Yeah, my, I suppose my strongest fancy of the night runs in this race. Uh, and unusually, it's Willie Mullins in a flat race. You know, it's not something we're, we're, we're very accustomed to, although he does do well, obviously, with a Royal Ascot winner last week. Uh, but Shamar is an import from France, you know, presumably was bought with Hurling in mind and has performed well over hurdles. He's only ran a couple of times in the flat since he arrived here for Willie. Uh, most notably, he was fourth in the October handicap in Nace last season. That was a hell of a good run, I think. Um, I think, you know, mile and two here in the Curra might be just, you know, the short to end for him but I think you know a good long straight he'll have lots of opportunity to get going and I think he's a horse that potentially could be well handicapped off his mark here based on some of his flat form well, Jane, with Nathan Carter uh, playing later on, I think the, the the name of the horse here, Chance to Dance, obviously for a lot of people, that'll be the one they'll be following. And this one is a really good chance. He won the Cork Derby last time for Jim Bulger over a mile and a half. Drop back to mile and two, won't bother him. Very interesting horse, and I think he'll take an awful lot of beating. But one probably a nice surprise is a horse that won last year, actually, over this course and distance. He won this very race. He's only six pounds higher. horse called Stronger Than Me. I think he's been running quite well this season, and I'd just take a chance of him around seven or eight to one. Very good. Um, that brings us on to our last race then. And obviously, I mean, we were all working very hard and got with our eyes set on Irish Champions Weekend, of course, coming up in September. And a horse with an entry in the ledger, a streetcar to stars. Um, an interesting an interesting contender. Yeah, listen, second in a listed race last time out as a maiden is a hell of a performance. You know, he's a sea to stars horse. You know, we all have very fond memories of him on the track and we're delighted to see his stock doing so well this year. But I think based on his run in Leperstown behind Rohan that, you know, he's a worthy favourite and he's one that I wouldn't take on. I think here for Toad Punters, it's a race to look for an exacta. You know, I think Streetcar to Stars will win it, and I think it's worth looking at um, Aidan O'Brien's horse, Annis Mirabilis, number one. Uh, you know, maybe for a Toad exacta, uh, just a little bit something different to, to, to finish the day instead of a straight win bet. Yes, Shane, it's very hard to look beyond Streetcar to Stars. As Noah said, that was a great run last time in a listed race. Mightn't have the strongest of listed races, and maybe drop him back to a mile and a quarter mightn't totally suit him, but he should have outclassed these. He's going to be odds on favourite, and I think there'll be a lot of people walking home if this lad doesn't actually win. One maybe I'd put in for the forecast is uh, Jim Bulger's Cold Drama. I thought he ran a nice race first time out at Down Royal last weekend, uh, finished second in, in an ordinary enough maiden, but they're bound to improve. I should take maybe her to be second ahead of Annis Mirabilis, but really, if Streetcar to Stars doesn't win, I'll certainly be walking home anyway. <laughs> Very good. Well, listen, Noel and Martin, thank you very much for your tips. We look forward to a great night's racing and a great start to the Derby Festival.